So welcome back everybody to 31 Days of Horror. We're on our 13th day now and uh, yeah, considering 13 is deemed unlucky, I thought we'd go with something that is also considered quite unlucky and that is a black cat, more specifically on The Black Cat from 1981. Clocking in at 91 minutes long, full-blown horror film directed by Lucio Fulci who I've only seen three other films from, Zombie Flesh Eaters, City of the Living Dead, and The House by the Cemetery, but this is easily my favourite of the four that I have seen from him. This stars Patrick McGee, who was also in Clockwork Orange, The Mask of the Red Death, Zulu, Chariots of Fire, Barry Lyndon, basically pretty much everything that was popular from the 60s and the 70s. And uh, yeah, Mimsy Farmer, who I've only seen one other film from, and that is Four Flies on Grey Velvet, which is also done by an Italian director, Dario Argento. Not my favourite from Argento, but still a decent film. As well as David Warbeck, who was also in Duck You Sucker, aka A Fistful of Dynamite, and the only other film I've seen from him outside of this. So, uh, yeah. The plot of this film is when a young couple goes missing in a sleepy English village, Scotland Yard Inspector Gawley is brought in to assist on the case. But what starts off as a routine investigation turns into a murder inquiry when that same couple are found dead in mysterious circumstances. So, I guess it's no surprise or a spoiler to really say it is the titular black cat that is causing these people to die. And as a result, you have some really rather full-blown animal attacks that are really rather violent. Easily one of the more violent animal attacks I've seen in any film. Obviously, you have other animals attacking people in other films, but in this, there's blood, there's gore, there's deep scratches going on, and there are people that are caused into... Uh, getting into accidents as well by the black cat so uh yeah really really well done in terms of that regard and the film as a whole is based loosely on an 1843 story of the same name by edgar Allan poe but unlike previous versions like i said you do have way more in the way of violence and uh, yeah it's only loosely based on the uh, net, uh, that story by poe because there's not much in relation to this film to that story unlike previous adaptions from say the 30s or the 60s but yeah, it's got a good cast, great cinematography, a super score, superb score by Pino, Pino Dinaggio. He also did the score for Don't Want Now, which is my, still my favourite horror film of all time. And a grossing plot, there are several effective kills, either because there's a really good tension building up to the kill, or it's done in a clever way, or just generally because the violence is really nicely done. It's got palpable tension throughout, and the, that cat is one damn, goddamn cute one. And uh, I... Even though, obviously, a cute cat isn't going to be something that is particularly scary, it is scary in terms of the violence that it causes towards people and uh, the accidents that it causes people to get into, which, you know, on the whole, is still a really rather uh, decent thing. But, yeah, it's not the first time a cat has been involved in a killer film. Obviously, Eye of the Cat came out in the 60s, which was also dealing with uh, cats being a force of either evil or general just uh, protection overall in terms of who they're protecting or what they're protecting but with this yeah it's basically just a pure evil cat which is fine by me so uh yeah really good release this is it's uh, from arrow video which you can always depend on and uh, yeah it is one of my uh, favorite horror films from the 80s like i said definitely my favorite from lucio fulci that i have seen obviously there are several other films that i've yet to see from him like don't touch or a duckling which i've heard great things from so it may well not end up being my favourite film overall from him once I eventually get through more of his uh, filmography, but regardless, it is my favourite of his from so far. And definitely my uh, one of the better Italian-directed films from the 80s as well, although Dario Ardencio does have the uh, crowning achievement from that period with the likes of Tenebrae and Phenom Phenomena. But yeah, nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!